Hey guys, Tim back here, Team TRCS1. Um, had video seven posted, but something happened and it got all thrown out of whack and went kablooey and stuff. So I'm going to redo it here. Uh, where we left off last time, we just got done finishing the wing bolt in the rear part of the wing. Um, the only thing I've done since then, well, you know, two things really, but um, I'll show you here in a fuselage. Right here on the rear part of the uh, cockpit area, you'll see right here that I added some wood. The reason I've done that is because when I go to put the canopy on, I'm going to put screws into that wood instead of gluing that on. And the reason is for that, if you have a mishap, uh, some sort of damage or anything, or you bust a canopy, you can just unscrew it, get another canopy, put it back on, or take the canopy off, make your repairs, and you're done. Um, I'll go uh, over a couple things real quick why I don't like to glue them on. Uh, in case you do have a repair or something like that, if you go to try to unattach that canopy from the rear right here, uh, you're on a high risk of, if you have no damage up here, you run a high risk of just ripping your covering. Then you have to end up repairing the covering and stuff. It, to me, it's just less of a hassle. Um, Plus, it gives you that cosmetic look of having a riveted look around your canopy, you know, with the tiny, tiny screws. And but uh, I did add, did add that right there. And then the other thing I did is right back here. I just added a, a block of wood to where I can screw my new tailwheel bracket into it. Um, we're not going to use the one I come out of the kit because I just don't like those, and they leave big ugly gouges in the wood and stuff like that. And what I'm going to switch to is just bolts to the bottom, goes to the rudder, and it's done. Um, so that's the only thing I've done on the fuselage, but let's jump right into the next step here uh, now that we got all the wing ready and uh, fuselage is done to the point. Now we're going to get down to what I did to the tail section. Uh, this is the rudder here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this right here is a whole new piece of wood right here in this part right here. Uh, the reason I did that is because the old glue and stuff was on there. Uh, down here in the bottom of you know, the, the glue and stuff was just way over glued. I wasn't going to try to clean all that off. Down here in the bottom was chewed out from where I had to pull the old bracket out of there. Um, had a lot of epoxy and stuff in it. So instead of trying to repair that piece of wood, uh, to me it was just a lot easier just taking some stock wood like this. Now, and, you well, know, taking some stock wood and just replacing it back in. But uh, try to closely match up your wood if you have to go buy it. Um, I got each one of these sticks 36 inches long they're half inch by 5 16 I believe it is something like that um, and it was only 78 cents a piece so um, so I got one for each aileron and two which would have been enough to do the ail you know the tail section but uh but how I replaced it um, you do have to be careful I'm just going to give you a demonstration here let's pretend that this right here is the old piece that's in here and even though this is wider, now if you if you end up buying the same size wood, it's not going to make a difference. Just cut your old piece out and glue a new one in. Um, th in this case, this being wider, what I had to do is I had to line the leading edge, the front side of the stick up here, and get it all nice and square. And then take a pencil, and you mark on the back side how wide that wood is. And then you proceed to cut your wood out that way. Um, what that does is make your shift stick stick shift backwards instead of forwards. Um, if you line it up on the back edge and go that way, what's going to happen is when you go to uh, put your piece back on, let me get this in the frame here so you can see what's going on. You can see the top of the vertical here. Um, this is not a finished out piece yet. It's not beveled yet, so it will move forward. But you, you'll end up with a, a spacing like that where your vertical sits here and your rudder sits back to it. Now, by the time I put my bevels and stuff in, it'll take off enough wood to where that'll match up perfectly. So, um, but the, just simple as that, you know, just, just cut out your old piece, put in a new one. Um, to keep your elevators the same, these, these are both done. What I did is once I removed the sticks, I pinned one on top of the other with a piece of wax paper in between. Um, just put pins in various places and then glued my new sticks in. That way I can ensure that this area right here would stay the same on each side so but basically that's it um, 
on that. Now the aileron with this type of wing, um, it, I don't know if you remember, let me pull the wing out here and show you, but the twist has no wing tip on it, it's just a flat wing tip. So right here on your trailing edge, where you see right here, th this is all flat. Now with the aileron, it doesn't matter if you cut back into it or just take the old stick off, because you will be at length if you just glue a new one on. But it's not going to hurt the airplane at all if you end up with just a little bit more aileron than what you started off with because when you go to put your hinges and stuff in, this will all be flat anyway. Now if you have a wing tip on your airplane that comes back over top of this, then you want to pay more attention to that and then use that step back method that I showed you on the tail section to make sure that this aileron will line up with that wing tip. So, but basically that's all we've done. Um, you know, just simple little things. Uh, make this one a little bit short and sweet here. Let me see if I can get this back under here without busting anything here. But that's what you're going to watch out for. And also, you want to make sure you cut your stock a little bit long. That way, when you go to sand it off, you can get it all even across your bottom edges. And like on your elevators, you know, you want to get it all even here. If you cut it too short here, then you'll end up coming up and then it has a flat spot coming straight here and you don't want that but uh as it happens on this elevator before I took the stick out it does come up and then flatten off a little bit but I can sand that off but the rule of thumb is too much is better than not enough um, so once you got all your sticks replaced I did cover in video 8 how I beveled and stuff with the sanding and stuff but you know just watch video number 8 and how to get these beveled and shaped up right and uh, I think that just about covers it on this one though. So sorry about the mishap of video number seven. Uh, we'll see you on video number eight. This is Tim, TNT RC Nuts One and Miss TNT RC Nuts. And we'll see you on the flip side, guys.